Hello boys and girls, a very good morning and welcome to this live doubts clarification session on quantitative aptitude and reasoning ability brought to you by Talent Sprint. Well, at the outset, a very happy and a successful year uh, to all of you, right? Uh, that's all we wish uh, on behalf of Talent Sprint and we all uh, hope that you start your uh, career with your dream bank or SSC or government job this year, right? Remember the year has changed but the strategy would remain the same practice practice and more practice right the more you practice the easier it gets so there's no other shortcut guys just one mantra practice is the key to success so keep doing that and keep uh, uh, taking more and more mock exams so that you tune yourself to that examination environment and be able to perform better in the real examination right so all the very best for all the exams that you're going to take up in the year 2019 and that also reminds me that this is the first live doubt clarification session of the year 2019 so let's start with a very interesting question uh, this year uh, in fact i had posted this question in my last doubt clarification session before we signed off so let's start discussing this now dushan says he's trying it but uh, i think let's just take it up so that we can solve many more questions here we go <coughs> so here's the question this was posted by Jay Murli see what it says city A is to be connected with the city B which is 25 kilometers to the southeast of the city A by 5 by 5 grid roads now this is important 5 by 5 grid roads so there is a city A and a city B this city B which here refers to city B okay so city B is 25 kilometers to the southeast of city A 25 kilometers in the southeast of city so you can visualize how the uh, two cities are uh, you know pointed on the map right now these two are connected by five by five grid roads now you understand what is a five by five grid right so uh, there are five vertical roads five horizontal roads and these roads connect city a to city b okay now buses are planned to be run from a to b city a to city b through the roads along east and south directions only and the return from B to A in the same roads of the route. Two buses will run in each route and each bus will have two trips. That is from A to B and B to A every day. How many such trips will be covered by all the buses in all routes between A and B in a day? So that's the challenge we have to work on, right? That's the kind of puzzle we have. Now try and observe. Try to, try to visualize the figure first. This is, let's say, city A. And it is connected with city B through a 5x5 five five grid. So let me just draw this 5x5 five five grid first. Right? So there are 5 horizontal roads. Each line that I draw here is like a road. Okay, let's assume that's the road. So 4 and the 5th road. Right? These are the 5 roads. Now 5 vertical roads. Road number 1, number 2, number 3. So we don't need this. One second. Okay, so this is the 5x5 five five, uh, grid that we have between the two cities. Okay, try and understand 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, vertical roads and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 horizontal roads. Now, this is city A. This point here is city A and this point here is city B. Now, what does it say? If you look at the question, city A is connected to city B, which is 25 kilometers to the southeast. You can see this is southeast, right? Southeast. City B is in the southeast direction. This is east of A. This is south of A. Anything that is in between is southeast. So B is in the southeast of A. And this is connected by 5 by 5 grid roads. Now buses are planned to be run from A to B. Buses run from A to B through the roads along east and south directions only. So buses which go from A to B. Right? Buses can have to travel from A to B. They can travel only in south or east directions. Meaning the buses can travel, you know, vertically downwards or horizontally towards the right. Eastwards or southwards only. You're getting it like a bus cannot take a route like this like for example it has started from a it comes down then goes east then it cannot go upwards it cannot go north northwards or it cannot go westwards that's not allowed it should go only southwards or eastwards and the return from b to a in the same roads of the route of course return will be north and west only you are able to follow from a to b you can go only southwards or eastwards you can take routes like that 
but from b to a when you're returning of course you have to go northwards or westwards now two buses will run in each route try to observe that there are going to be multiple routes here and that's where the uh, that's what we have to work on actually right how many routes are there from a to b what does it say buses will run in each route and each bus will have two trips that is from a to b and b to a so in each of the routes we will run a bus right and each bus will have two trips there are two buses in each route and each bus will have two trips a to b and then b to a so how many total number of trips will be there now first of all let us understand the meaning of a route what do you mean by a route here right let me just highlight that for example for example a to b what are the different ways in which i can go from a to b let me trace a route i'll use a different color so that you can follow it right a to b what can be a route from a to b i can come southwards like this and then go eastwards i reach city b so this is route number one let's say but there's another possibility i can go eastwards and then south and then i can trace this this is route number two or route number three or route number four or route number five but does it end here no i can come like this and then follow this route and then again go southwards six then seven and then this is eight or i can go i take a staircase way like like for example i can go like this one two three i mean you you understand the the i i hope you're able to see the pointer let me let me use a laser to highlight that right my route can also be this is this not a proper route i am going only southwards and eastwards this is a route or this can be a route or this can be a route or this can be a route you understand so we have to find out all such routes available to reach city b right all these are different types of routes different routes available the only condition here is we should only be traveling southwards or eastwards we cannot go northwards or westwards when we are going from a to b so how many such routes are there and your final answer is going to be something else what will be the final answer he says find out the number of trips how many such trips will be there now this number of trips will be equal to number of routes into see in each route we have two buses two buses will fly in each route two buses will run in each route right and each bus will make two trips one trip from a to b the other trip from b to a so total number of trips are going to be number of routes into two buses for, per route and two trips per bus so number of routes into 2 into 2 yes or no each bus will have two routes each bus sorry each route will have two buses and each bus will take two trips a to b and b to a so your final answer depends on the number of routes if you can find out what is the number of routes you're done so what is the number of routes is the question here number of routes multiplied by 4 will answer now you can spend some time figuring out what to do here to get the number of routes counting definitely is not the way because for example if there are 40 routes how are you going to count it and by the time you end up counting 40 routes you'll go mad right so that's definitely not the way we have to use a smarter way to solve this question now let me show you a very very simple method in which you can arrive at the answer to this question remember all of you have used this method for solving at least uh 10 questions from permutations and combinations already it's just that you have to realize that the same method can be applied in solving this question as well right eventually when we solve we will figure out that this is such a simple question but then to realize that simple method you have to spend some time so let's let's discuss this see so try to observe if you now no one more point if you are all worried about this 25 km distance between a and b that is of no use a to b the distance is 25 km but that does not matter right that doesn't really matter now try to observe whatever be the route that i take here out of all the let's say hundreds of routes possible whichever route i take the one thing which is common in all the routes is i have to travel four parts southwards and four parts eastwards for example let's say this is is like this e1 e2 e3 e4 s1 s2 s3 s4 right so if you observe for example if you look at route number i uh, i i'll i'll point out just just look at this let me use the laser again to help you for example if you take this route straight down and then right right now what have you done you have covered four 
parts S1, S2, S3, S4 and then E1, E2, E3, E4. That makes your root. Right? So let me just write it down. Right? That can be a root. My root can look like this. My root can look like this. S1. One of the roots can look like this. S1, S2, S3, S4, E1, E2, E3, E4. Or I can go E1, E2, E3, E4, then S1, S2, S3, S4. Right? So that can be another one. E1, E2, E3, E4, S1, S2, S3, S4. Or I may go, what can be the other root? S1, E1, S2. See, this is not S2. This, this vertical coverage is S1. It is denoted by S1. Whether this is this is S1, this also is S1. All the five are referred to as S1. All these five are referred to as S2, let's say. Right? All these are S3. So the staircase root will look like what? S1, E1, S2, E2, S3, E3, S4, E4. Or it can be E1, S1, E2, S2, E3, S3, E4, S4. Or I can have S1, S2, E1, E2, S3, S4, E3, E4. Or it can be S1, S2, E1, S3, E2, E3, S4, E4. That will that is what will make my roots, right? All the all the roots possible here, right? So we have to find out all such combinations, all such, you know, possible roots, all such possible roots. Now it's simple. If you actually look at it in in this fashion, what happens? I have got four parts S1, S2, S3, S4 downwards, four parts E1, E2, E3, E4 eastwards or rightwards, right? I have to arrange these eight letters. In how many ways can you arrange eight letters? In how many ways can you arrange eight letters? Eight factorial ways. But remember, there are common letters here. There is no difference between S1, S2, S3, S4. All these four are the same. So divide by four factorial. And there is no difference between E1, E2, E3, E4. All these are the same. So divide by another four factorial. Remember, for example, let's let's take a word. Uh, let's let's take a word between in how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word between see one two three four five six seven seven letters so we can arrange in seven factorial ways but we know that e is appearing thrice so we divide by three factorial now why we divide by three factorial we have discussed in our basic videos of formulations and combinations right for example if you take it as e1 e2 and e3 whether it is e2 e3 or e3 e2 the word remains the same or this is e2 e1 e3 the word still remains between only you're getting it so to avoid all those uh, repeat words we take three factor in the denominator exactly is what we are doing here to avoid all those see if for example when s1 s2 s3 s4 e1 e2 e3 e4 has been taken as a root i can also take uh, s1 s2 in my combination it can come like this s4 s3 e1 e2 e3 e4 but is there any difference between these two roots no actually s4 s3 is not possible strictly speaking s4 s3 is not possible because you cannot take s1 then s2 then jump to S4 and then come back to S3. That's not possible at all. But the meaning is, whether you have S1, S2, S4, S3 or S1, S2, S3, S4, both are the same. Similarly, whether it is E1, E2, E3, E4 or E1, E2, E4, E3, actually it is the same. Right? So just divide 8 factorial by 4 factorial and 4 factorial to get the correct number of combinations without any repetitions. You are able to follow. You are able to follow. For for example, let's take another word. Uh, let's say if if you if you take the word uh, um, buses, what happens? In how many ways can you arrange the, arrange the letters of the word buses? We have five letters here, five factorial. But will that give you the right answer? No, because there are two s's here. We have to divide by two factorial. Let me explain you why we are dividing by two factorial here. Again, this has been discussed in the basic videos. I'm just giving you an example. So what can be the possible words which can be formed? Five factorial by two factorial is. 120 by 2, which is 60 words can be formed, right? 60 words can be formed here using the letters of the word buses. Now, why do we divide by two factorial is this. If you take B, U, let's say S1, let's let's name this as S1, this as S2. S1, E, S2. This is B, U, S2, E, S1. Or S1, S2, B, U, E. S2, S1, B, U, E. Or B, U, S1, E, S2. Or sorry, B, U, E. S1, S2 or B, U, E, S2, S1. Likewise, you get a number of combinations. Now tell me, is there any difference between these two words? No. Huh. In terms of numbering, it looks like S1, this is look S2 and this is S2 and this is S1. But the word is the same. B, U, S, E, S. B, U, S, E, S. Likewise, if you look at the next two words, what happens? 
it appears to be different s1 s2 bue s2 s1 bue but actually s1 and s2 are not different they are the same letters so it is ss bue this also is ss bue so it has been counted twice likewise bue ss bue ss or bu sse bu sse so all these repetitions are getting nullified the moment you divide by 2 factorial similarly here all the repetitions because of e1 e2 e3 will get nullified if you divide by 3 factorial so the same thing has to be done here all the combination that i get in terms of sequencing of s1 s2 s3 s4 or e1 e2 e3 e4 have to be nullified because those are not really different so divide by 4 factorial 4 factorial in simple words this boils down to a very simple question that in how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word s s s s e e e e eight letters eight factorial divided by four factorial four factorial simplify this now so this will be like eight into six uh, seven into six into five into four factorial divided by this four factorial let's take as it is and four factorial is 24 we know so four factorial four factorial gets cancelled uh, six into eight is 48 48 is divided by 24 we get two so 2 into 7, 14, 14 into 5, 70. So your answer is going to be 70. Number of roots are 70. If number of roots are 70, your number of trips here would be 70 into 2 into 2. 70 to 2 into 2, which is 280. Option D is going to be the answer. Remember again, explanation has taken time. But now that you have understood this concept, next time onwards, when you have to solve such questions where there is a grid and you have to find out the number of roots, you just take in this fashion. You just take it in this fashion. You getting it? Likewise, if it is a 6 by 7 grid, here we have got 5 by 5 grid. It can be any type of grid 6 by 7, 3 by 4, 3 by 12, or 5 by 8. Just count the number of pieces that you have to travel downwards, number of pieces that you have to travel, number of legs, each leg, right? This is one leg, this second leg, third leg, fourth leg. So, number of legs downwards, number of legs rightwards, and take it in the form of arranging the letters of a word. So the final answer to this question is 280, which was posted by Murli. And I'm not sure if Murli is present in the session today, but you can watch this video later.